again this Monday afternoon. Today is a historic day for the island nation of Cuba and its embassy, as its embassy has officially been opened in the United States. Now, during a ceremony held in Washington, D.C., the Cuban flag was hoisted over the Caribbean country's embassy in the U.S. Capitol. The opening marks a new chapter in relations following statements made by U.S. President Barack Obama and Cuban President Raul Castro, declaring both nations' willingness to begin normalizing and formalizing diplomatic ties back in December. The historic shift is being greeted by excitement by both residents of the United States and Cuba. And we're going to take a look now at how we arrived to this historic opening of embassies. On December 17, 2014, Presidents Barack Obama and Raul Castro announced the partial reestablishment of diplomatic relations. Now, during his address, President Obama admitted that the U.S. policy of attempting to isolate Cuba had in fact failed. Then on January 22, 2015, ex-U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Western Hemisphere Affairs, Roberta Jacobson, met in Havana with Cuba's General Director for the United States, Josefina Vidal, to negotiate the opening of embassies. Then on May 29, 2015, Cuba was taken off of the U.S. list of state sponsors of terrorism as a prerequisite of formalizing relations. Finally, since just after midnight today, July 20th, both Cuba and the United States have officially opened embassies in each other's capitals. Nonetheless, Cuba continues to insist that relations cannot be completely normalized while the U.S. economic blockade on Cuba remains in place. And now we're going to go live to Washington. We're going to go to Catherine Murphy. She's a filmmaker and a journalist. She has worked extensively in Cuba and is currently outside the country's new embassy there. Catherine, thanks so much for joining us. So after more than 50 years of suspended relations, this is a significant moment, right? What is the significance of these opening of embassies and what's the atmosphere there outside of the embassy and when that flag was raised? Well, there, it's been a very historic day. There were hundreds of people both inside and out of the embassy today to witness the raising of the Cuban flag here for the first time in over 50 years. Both Roberta Jacobson and Josefina Vidal were present, as well as representatives from many diverse sectors of U.S. society um, who have worked over decades to toward normalization of relations. Um, uh, Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez was also present, and they did a very solemn, um, <laughs> serious, in the Cuban fashion, traditional raising of the flag with three um, uniformed, white uniformed soldiers marching out, standing and raising the flag, and in spite of all of the people that were around, it was a moment of like heavy silence and then a whole lot of cheering. And let's remind our viewers that while we do see this, there are still um, some issues that remain to be solved between the two countries. What are those? Of course, among those is the, the economic blockade. And is, is there talk of that today, of those issues? Well, this is a huge historic step forward and that's sort of that they're talking about talking. <laughs> the December 17th announcement by President Obama and President Raul Castro that um, steps would be taken toward normalization um, mark a change in direction, of course, with U.S. policy. But there are many unresolved issues that need to be brought to the table. The reestablishment of embassies in the two different countries just says now we're agreeing, the two countries are agreeing to sit down and talk, um, to use diplomacy to talk about our many differences. The U.S., um, but the U.S. trade embargo, which Cubans call a blockade, is still very much in place. There are still restrictions on U.S. travel. There are only 12 categories of what they call what the U.S. Uh, State Department or, and Treasury Department call purposeful travel, 
via which U.S. citizens can travel to Cuba. So the travel hasn't opened. Many people think because they see all the headlines in the press that, oh, everything is, is normalized, you know, quote unquote. Um, but that is far from true. This is the first step. Of course, there have been multiple talks um, since the December 17th announcement. There have been multiple talks both in Havana and in Washington where some of the main sticking points were brought to the table. Uh, one of Cuban's first um, requests or conditions really for normalization was to be removed from the terrorist list. Cuba was uh, removed from the terrorist list. Uh, Barack Obama suggested it. And in the absence of a uh, massive, I think it's a congressional majority, it takes maybe a two-thirds majority to try to block it. The Congress did not have that kind of support, so they just didn't even try to fight it. Um, and so a month ago, Cuba was taken off of the terrorist list. There's still a lot to talk about. There's a lot to be worked out. But this is a major step forward and um, a wonderful day for both countries. And Catherine, um, we had heard talk um, from some conservative lawmakers that they would uh, at least try to delay the appointment of an ambassador from the U.S. What about those conservative lawmaker voices? Are they still uh, raising their voices there um, today? And do they continue to try to, or do they plan to continue to try to push back as the two countries uh, move forward in normalizing relations? There definitely were people of that perspective who were here this morning and were making their voices heard as well. Um, but the, in terms of blocking an ambassador, the two countries have taken the decision that at least for now, the current heads of mission on each side will be stepped up to charged affairs and they will head up these new embassies uh, for the time being until uh, ambassadors can be named uh, on each side. All right, uh, Catherine Murphy joining us there, witnessing history there as the uh, Cuban uh, embassy is opened in Washington, D.C. Thanks so much for joining us.